You ever wonder what happens to the polystyrene coffee cup when you're done with your coffee? Those people just throw it away. But for us, the polystyrene coffee cup is the first step towards making a more ecological surfboard. We take these and we recycle them, and this is what we use to make the cores of our surfboards. Check this out. So what we do is we take all those coffee cups and things like TV packaging and everything else, and it gets recycled. Usually surfboards, epoxy surfboards, are made out of EPS, which is an expanded polystyrene. The advantage of the EPS is a lot of air, which makes it very, very light blank. But at the same time, because you have lots of little beads with air between the beads, you end up with water being able to get inside the blank. So if you put a little hole in the board up here, for example, or somebody runs into you and they put a, a ding in the board from the fin, water can get in there and it can work its way all the way up into the nose of the board. With an extruded blank like this, no water can get in the board. The, it's completely waterproof. And that means that if somebody does hit the board, if you get a hole in the board, then it's not going to fill up with water and you're not going to have to replace it. And, very important, non-outgassing. That means that if you leave the board in the sun, the core doesn't emit gases which then cause it to delaminate. This is the problem with XTR and most uh, extruded boards and they have to put a valve in the board over here or they draw holes all the way down the rail so that the air can escape, the gases can escape. And with the recycled polystyrene, because the polystyrene is old and a couple of other things that we do that I'm not going to tell you about, the board is non-outgassing. Another little interesting thing is it's very, very strong. You can bend this foam from here without the stringers in it, and now it has the stringers in it. But when you take the stringers up, you can bend this foam 90 degrees and it doesn't snap. So that basically means that a huge weight landing on the board is very unlikely going to snap your board in two. It also needs to perform better than the average board out there so that the person who buys the board wants to keep it and they don't replace it as often and it needs to last longer so that, again, when the person gets a board like this, instead of replacing the board every two or three months, which is usually the case with surfing, they can keep a board like this for a couple of years. Um, and that is an important part of making a sustainable, ecological surfboard. Now when you take this water, I'm gonna show you a little demonstration here. You take the water and you pour it on this BXP3 core, and you see, it just beads up on the core like that. It doesn't infiltrate the core like that, you see? It just sits on top, you can flush it off, you turn it on its side, and it just rolls off the board of it, it just rolls off the core, it can't stand, it can't go inside the core. And compare that now to EPS, when I'm pouring the water here on the EPS, you see here we got a little piece of EPS, and I pour the water up, look at that, it sucks straight in, just right into the EPS foam, it absorbs right there through, and now look, I put it on its side, and I tilt it up like this, and you can see the water running out of the EPS foam. So, and this is what most surfboards and most epoxy surfboards are made out of, is this EPS foam. And now I want to show you how we laminate this board. Well, this is fiberglass. This is what is usually used to laminate a surfboard. This is a piece of six ounce fiberglass. And basically the fiberglass is draped over the board, loosely like this, and then it's laminated into the board. It's non-biodegradable. It's very dangerous for the workers who use it uh, for the lungs. Uh, um, you know, this is bad for you with smoking, sanding this stuff. So it's really bad. Um, and uh, the other thing as well is, as you can see here, it's non-stretchy. The, the fiberglass itself can't move, you see that? I pull on it, which means that if this becomes under tension, if a wave lands on the board and it starts to stretch the fiberglass and there's a lot of pressure, it just essentially, it cracks, it breaks. This is the bamboo fiber that we use. It's 100% bamboo fiber, so there's no lycra, there's no cotton or anything else, but look at this. And when we make the board, the, the bamboo fiber is actually smaller than the board. And then it's stretched, literally, over the board surface and wrapped around the rails, like that. And what this does is, first of all, it gives the board a really springy feeling, so that when you're riding the board, you can really feel this energy that's building up. And then if a big wave lands on your board, and the board starts to flex, and the foam flexes, which is BXP3 core can flex, and when it moves down, what happens is the bamboo fiber can follow. So as the bottom of the board, let's say, is flexing like this, and the waves landing on the board is compressing the board, and the fiber on the bottom is in tension, and what happens is the bamboo fiber just does this. Combined with the epoxy resin, which is also very elastic epoxy resin compared to uh, polystyrene or polyester resin, very, very elastic, which means that this can pull like that, 
and the board bends, and then after the wave pressure is released, boom, it all comes back into position and your board isn't broken. The key thing here is that the ecological board is actually more performing than the non-ecological board. This is, this is really, really key because usually people equate ecological with a step down. Okay, I'm doing something for the environment, so I need to take a step back in what I demand for my product and performance and so on and so forth. And that is not true. In this case, the ecological surfboard is stronger and longer lasting and more performing than the non-ecological board. It doesn't delaminate from outgassing, it doesn't absorb water if you impact it. The bamboo fiber doesn't break as easily as the fiberglass when it's under compression from a wave landing on the board. And basically you have a board which rides better, feels better, lasts longer and is better for the environment. And those are key factors. And this is how all surfboards should be made within five years. Anybody not making surfboards like that has their head in the ground. And this is what the final board looks like once it's made. This is made entirely with sustainable materials. Bamboo fiber shell on the outside, which is compression molded, which is like vacuum bagging, combined with the BXP3 100% recycled core, a fin system, which if you hit the fins, doesn't break the, the board. What happens is this little disc pops out, and that way the board isn't broken, just the fin pops out, you go pick it up, you can put a new disc in. And also, because it's adjustable, it means that you need fewer boards because you can make your board do more things. Very, very lightweight. This board weighs 2.25 kilograms which is super lightweight, very, very strong. You can jump up and down on this board here. I mean, it's, this is not gonna break at all. Now, very, very strong on impact. I mean, really, really an incredible product that just rides super well. It's super clean feeling in the water, super clean look, whiter than white. If you look at the scene in the light, I mean, look at that thing glow in the light. Beautiful, beautiful boards that this bamboo fiber makes. And uh, I mean, I'm totally sold on this. It's just so much fun to ride. So much fun to ride.